This is the story of the World War I Christmas Truce. A truce is an agreement between enemies to stop fighting for a period of time, and Christmas is, well, Christmas. We start in 1914. Dubliners in the letters of Vincent van Gogh are best-selling books. Heidelberg Quintets by the Beautiful Sea was top of the charts, and Everton just won the English Football League. Oh, and the First World War started. The World War began on the 28th of July 1914, with Austria-Hungary declaring war on Serbia. 149 days of brutal conflict later was the 24th of December, better known as Christmas Eve. British machine gunner Bruce Bairn's father, later a prominent cartoonist, wrote about his experiences of the Christmas truce in his memoirs while stationed in Belgium. Bairn's father recalls hearing the Germans singing carols at around 10pm on Christmas Eve. Some of the Brits responded in their own song. This prompted an English-speaking German to invite the English over. However, a British sergeant insisted they met halfway instead. Enemy soldiers began to climb nervously out of their trenches to meet in the middle of the barbed-wired field No Man's Land, which was normally only crossed to go in in advance or collect the dead. This day, however, the soldiers would trade songs, tobacco, and wine. Bairn's father noted that there wasn't an atom of hate on either side. And this wasn't confined to one battlefield. Starting on Christmas Eve, small pockets of French, Belgian, British, and German troops held impromptu ceasefires across the Western Front, with reports of some in the Eastern Front as well. There are numerous accounts of activities that took place during the truces, such as Germans using candles to light Christmas trees, Brits cutting Germans' hair in return for cigarettes, and men on each side uniting to help one another collect their dead. British soldier John Ferguson recalled it in this way, Here we were laughing and chatting to men whom only a few hours before we were trying to kill. However, by far the most famous event of the truce was the football game. A translated diary of a German lieutenant who experienced the festive celebrations states, Eventually the English brought a soccer ball from their trenches and pretty soon a lively game ensued. How marvellously wonderful, yet strange it was, the English officers felt the same way about it. Thus Christmas, the celebration of love, managed to bring moral enemies together as friends for a time. The exact number of soldiers who partook in the ceasefires is unknown, as they were on a small scale, unplanned and unauthorised. However, Time magazine's story on the truce's 100 year anniversary believes up to 100,000 men took part. Not everyone was exactly thrilled with the festivities, with a German soldier stating, Such a thing should not happen in wartime, have you no sense of German honour left? That soldier was a man by the name of Adolf Hitler. On the 7th of December 1914, Pope Benedict had implored the leaders of the battling nations to hold a Christmas truce, asking that the guns may fall silent at least upon the night the angels sang. This plea was officially ignored. So when a truce spontaneously broke out, the leaders of all the armies were reportedly horrified. Some accounts of the Christmas truce detail that soldiers were punished for fraternisation and the top command issued orders that this should never happen again. What's so unique about this event is the numerous accounts from the soldiers themselves, giving you an insight into their feelings. A British rifleman recalled a German saying, Today we have peace. Tomorrow you will fight for your country, I fight for mine. Good luck. Going back to Bairnfather's account, he would declare, I wouldn't have missed that unique and weird Christmas day for anything. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe if you haven't already.